Yeah. What is being called? Yeah. Go ahead, Haroon. I, I wanted to come to you anyway. No, no. What's being called the deep state is otherwise known as democracy, democracy at work. Uh, as Lynn just said, uh, Mr. Clinton was constantly being quote unquote hounded and probed and investigated. Same was true of Richard Nixon. Uh, in fact, same is true of Barack Obama. The Republicans and the right wing uh, lobbies and right wing press never let up on him from day one. I mean, this man was. Was, was elected with such a huge vote and so on, but uh, the partisanship has been such, uh, was such on him, that he was deemed to be a foreigner, he was deemed to be a Muslim. These are totally unfounded allegations. So welcome to the American uh, democracy, which is uh, sort of a, a high profile uh, partisanship that is at work. So this paranoia, that Mr. Trump is being hounded somehow, it just doesn't make any sense. What well, makes sense is that he, he is himself, uh, he is the master of his own fate at this point. Arun, let me ask you this, because what happens here in Washington, of course, is not really a purely domestic issue, is it? These, these things that are going on here have implications throughout the world. The world is looking to the United States, and in many exactly. instances, they look at the United States for leadership. Um, th that's not happening right now, is it? It's, it's being sacrificed. No, it's not happening. Not only it's not happening, we are so obsessed with, with Mr. Sessions, his own attorney general, Russia probe, uh, people are out to get me. It's a kind of paranoia that's consuming him. Why don't you get on to do what you said you would do? You know, you want to fix the world. We can, we can agree to disagree how do you go about fixing the world. We can agree to disagree what is the best way of getting rid of ISIS. We can agree to disagree what is the best way of dealing with Iran. But get on with it. Let's see what you're able to do. You know, the only uh, great incursions that he has made, he made this famous trip to Saudi Arabia, and he was so overawed by the, by the gold and gilded palaces and so on, uh, that he ended up siding with the monarchs in Saudi Arabia and to gang up against Qatar and so on. Uh, that is the sort of only uh, big policy initiative that we have seen. It makes absolutely no sense. I can agree or disagree, I, that's a different thing. But let's see okay. what you're capable of I, doing I, in the world and provide the leadership. If I may, I would say that he took a leadership position. Of course, leadership's in the eyes of the beholder, but he took a side. An American president of the last 20 years doesn't take sides. They just walk down the middle. He took a side with Saudi Arabia over Qatar. Qatar. He actually has uh, helped through the efforts of the army in Iraq. They've liberated Mosul. I realize that the Iraqi army did that, but it took Obama eight years to do nothing. And in six months, there has been a lot of movement on ISIS in Iraq. He, whether you agree with the decision or not, when it comes to the Paris Accord, he took a bold and politically not very advantageous position in pulling out of that deal. It may not be the leadership that right. uh, people around the world like, but it is leadership. Well, that is, see, sir, you Fine. have made is, the point that when, when, that when President Trump, if he wants to work on policy, he could try and do the things that people uh, elected him for. Yep. When he gets sidetracked on whether or, you know, uh, in insisting he won a popular vote when he did not, and setting up a vote commission to try and make it look like he won a popular vote in the end when he didn't, these are distractions to the kinds of things you're talking about. So when President Trump seems to blame other people or news, this is brought on by himself for things that he won't uh, exactly. focus on, which is policy. All right, let me go to Alexander. I wanna, Alexander, I want to ask you about these uh, Russian investigations. Uh, has the president effectively uh, lost all his options right now when it comes to Russia? Because we've just seen the U.S. Congress agree on a new sanctions uh, package against Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, the president can veto that. He doesn't have to sign that into law. But if he does, then he's going to face accusations of colluding with Russia. Uh, so he's got very little choice here, has, hasn't he? Well, first of all, I'd like to disagree with, uh, and quite strongly with the points made before that uh, Obama and Clinton and others were under uh, pressure. They were not. <laughs> They did not have to deal with a hostile intelligence service, which is unprecedented in the history probably of the whole world, when the FBI, the CIA, and others are acting against their president. This is unique. This has never been seen before. The media is conducting a campaign. Excuse me, I've been a journalist for 35 years. This is ridiculous. You are talking about democracy. This is not democracy. This is a, 
assassinations uh, by, by word, basically. This is character assassinations. Every day, there are rumors picked up by the media, which is leaked through, through intelligence services. This is a coup, ladies and gentlemen. This is a creeping coup against a sitting <laughs> president. Oh, sir, so, you're, so, so you're so, I wish to, we had more time. Me, I'll, I'll to compare him left. to Clinton, to Clinton, whom the media protected. He should have been impeached, by the way, but he nearly, was protected by the media. Nearly oh, and half, you are telling nearly me half that of he the is American under people. pressure. Excuse me, this is not democracy. Okay. This is chaos and anarchy. Okay, I'm going to go around the table. Lynn first, I'll get to you, Brian. Well, okay. well just, you know, I covered the Clinton administration and the scandals there, and you had, you had as always, an American press corps that is aggressive. That was then, this is now. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian? No, I, I would say this, on, on the Clinton issue, listen, that's water under the bridge, but by comparison, it was with the Clinton impeachment, I stopped calling myself a Republican. I thought it was disruptive, it was distractive, it was ridiculous. I didn't buy into that at all. I don't, I'm not a fan of Clinton, but I thought to put the country through that for what little there was there, ridiculous. They're doing it even worse with President Trump. I agree, this is a coup. And half of the American people, whether they like Trump or not, believe that this is not democratic what's happening in this country. They don't have to like Trump, but they look at this and go, get back to health care, get back to jobs, the economy, infrastructure, but and can. upward mobility. This, he, but, but, you, but the president has to defend himself. The president has to defend himself because old school Presidents politics. do many well, things at the same time. We've and seen he is. that happen. You make it look like he can't do okay. more than one thing. Of course he could do more than one thing. He, he's we cut know upwards that. of $100 billion in regulations that are House, choking Republicans small businesses. Control the House and the Senate, and he is the most powerful exactly, man in America. Exactly, that's the point. He Republicans could, are controlling. He could advance okay. the things that let you're me, talking about. All right, let me go to Haroon. Go ahead, Haroon. No, all I was saying to Brian was that uh, it is he controls both the Republican Party controls both the Senate and and the House. So his own party is 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 busy what prosecuting him. No. They're merely investigating him. So it's not some enemies. It's not Democrats. It's not. Muslims, it's not leftists. It is his own party that controls both houses of, uh, of Congress that is investigating him. That is democracy at work. So if you disagree with on your own Republicans, uh, feel free, you know, go ahead. And that's, that's how democracy operates. I'm not, I'm not a Republican, by the way. I'm a conservative, and there's a difference. I, I think half of the Republican Party is as bad as the left in our country. They're part of the problem. They, they don't stand for anything, and they sure don't stand up for this president. So it's secretly a lot of them want him to they fail. Should have defeated them in, sure, they, should, they have. should have defeated them in the last election. They yes. should have, yes. Sure. Okay. Lynn, here's but their elected people represented You would think from this conversation that Trump didn't win. He won. Everybody agrees he's the ah. president. The thing is, Lynn, that he, his domestic legislative agenda is yeah. he's struggling right now, isn't he's he? He's struggling because the, his own party doesn't agree with it. And part of this is he, I don't think... And while you're talking, actually, yeah. we can look at some live pictures of Trump right. at a right. campaign event in Youngstown, Ohio. Do you want me to speak or not? Go ahead. Okay, Go so ahead. Here, here's the thing. And, and, and our system is that Congress is co-equal with the White House. And, and Trump finally, is used to running his own business, a family business. And, uh, and he, tr he doesn't seem to get yet that he has to negotiate with Congress to make a deal. What is he famous for? Let's make a deal. Uh, and you have mm -hmm. an independent House and Senate run by people of his own party, different stripes, different things, different concerns, but he can't just make the call. And I think this is what I see as evolving and as the Trump presidency evolves, is that he's understanding that even as president, you can't force Congress just to go like that and deliver exactly. the vote you want. You have to sometimes compromise you can't and negotiate. Be a billionaire. That's what yeah, every president he's a does. Billionaire who Okay. Yeah, he's a billionaire who is used to ordering people around, and you cannot order Congress around. Uh, let me just add one brief thing to what Lynn is saying. Mm -hmm. Maybe the problem is far more fundamental. He ran an election campaign uh, uh, making such dishonest promises and so on. I'm going to bring jobs back from China. That's physically impossible. How is he going to do that? Uh, he, pr he promises people in Pennsylvania and so on, I'm going to reopen coal mines. Is, is, is that doable? Is, is it possible to bring jobs back from China? It's not doable. I mean, he does not, he is fighting against the reality of a globalized world. 
and he's finding himself uh, shortchanged at every turn because he cannot deliver. He cannot possibly yeah, well, deliver. I, I, would beg, I would beg Maybe to differ on that. Trump, Trump, okay, Trump has, very quickly, Trump, Brian. Trump has delivered 40,000 new mining jobs, and a number of businesses that were leaving this country have said, we're not leaving. We'll keep some jobs here. That's progress. So you can't say he we didn't fulfill see. his promises. Okay, we are well, going to have sure. to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's all we have time for. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.